Well, three of the seven Magnificent Seven stocks are taking hits so far this year. Shares of Apple, Alphabet, and Tesla are in the red this week. Now, we are focusing on those three laggards and what it's going to take for some of that momentum to turn. Today, we're talking Apple. Shares are down about 10% since the start of the year. Apple came into the year with some worrisome trends, four quarters in a row of declining iPhone sales, with weakness in China weighing on those results. Apple also facing a legal battle over the blood oxygen sensor in its Series 9 and Ultra 2 watch models. Analysts were quick to pick up on the growing problems. Pepper Sandler, Barclays, and Redburn Atlantic all downgrading the stock in the first couple weeks of the year. Goldman Sachs removing Apple from its conviction buy list in March. A slew of negative headlines and data has also contributed to the stock's declines this year. From the blood oxygen patent dispute to the company's disappointing Q1 results and guidance to the reported cancellation of the company's 10-year-old EV project and the hefty fine from the EU over Apple's App Store practices. Most recently, a counterpoint research report showing that China's smartphone sales dropped 24 percent in the first six weeks of the year compared to a year ago. So what is it going to take for Apple to turn things around? We want to bring in Laura Martin, Needham Senior Media and Internet Analyst. Laura, Quite the setup for you. We have laid out what Apple has been looking at over the last several months. What is it going to take? And do you think Apple is going to turn things around? You know, I do. The most valuable asset they have is an installed base of two billion um, devices and about a billion and a half unique users worldwide, which because of their enormous price premium on their products, really it's the richest people on earth. And that's sort of their, I'm going to call it monopoly in an oligopoly industry structure between them and Android. So what they have is sort of consumer lock-in for that group of, of um, devices. And like you say, maybe demand is slower in China, but they have these really wonderfully wealthy demographics already using their ecosystem. So they need to add advertising to drive revenue growth. It's a $600 billion a year business and they do $2 billion a year in it. So they need to add advertising to get growth back and also advertising has 80% profit margins. So, um, and they need to figure out a way to add more services and software that they can get more subscription revenue, which is a 60% margin, um, to get more revenue per device. But what they have is 2 billion active devices, daily active devices, which is a really wonderful installed base. And so for the management and, and how they're going to be able to navigate this year with pulling some of the levers that you just mentioned a moment ago, or at least leaning into uh, some of those opportunities here, there's a lot of focus around the lighter fluid that generative AI could be to smartphone demand and, and the products in the future. When could that actually be realized for companies like Apple or even on the other side of that uh, on an OS perspective, Android products? Right. So I expect Apple to continue to lag the generative AI companies. So what I think is happening in America is Google, Amazon, OpenAI are creating a new basis of competition for all of American business. And NVIDIA is the arms dealer in the chips for all of those. So that opportunity of Gen AI is unique to a dozen companies, and those will continue to outperform Apple. Apple doesn't have the you know, it operates in the smartphone ecosystem, which is a single industry. So that's what it's defending. So it can, it's going to be limited, in my opinion, to just doing a better job in its wheelhouse, in its barn. Meanwhile, there's a maelstrom going on outside of that that's a bigger opportunity. So I think Apple continues to outperform the S&P, but it doesn't continue to outperform these companies that are going to redefine competition in America. Laura, when it comes to some of the pressures that Apple has been under specifically over in Europe from the EU and the crackdown that we are seeing there, what's the, is there a material impact to Apple's bottom line from that? So the answer is the reason Apple makes so much money and the reason you pay $1,400 for a smartphone and I just bought a keyboard the other day and it was $350, where on Amazon you can buy these at $50 each, is because they have that proprietary locked-in ecosystem. And that makes the EU mad because, as you know, a lot of the EU socialist countries, they want everything to be open, to be competitive. They want consumer pricing down. So um, I, if you read the complaint, which I did, they charged them $2 billion because they thought Apple would ignore them if they actually just charged them the harm number, which was like $300 million. So I think this is the EU sending a message to Apple that we don't like proprietary ecosystems. We don't like this pricing premium that our consumers are opting into. 
Um, and, and, you know, Spotify is European, as you know. And so um, I, I think that Apple will fight it. And I think that they won't end up paying the full $2 billion. They'll get it down some. And I just don't know if Apple will actually change substantively, although with their, if they're smart, with their bigger customers that can afford to take Apple to court in the EU, they should do deals. They should have like proprietary, like, you know, volume-based deals. So if you use a certain number of revenue on, you should charge less because then they won't take you to court because they're benefiting. So that's what I would do if I was Apple, is I would figure out a way to handle this in the contract between companies and not bring it to the EU's attention because the EU is going to side with the, the quote, the little guy, which is not Apple. The near term, and as we're on the international conversation here, the near term headwinds that they've been seeing in China, is that a changing wind in the consumer mindset? And if so, how large of an implication could that have for Apple here? Apple is a geopolitical pawn that the more you read in this country about America banning TikTok, the more China has, China substantively has said no employee of the Chinese government, and there's millions of people in the Chinese government, can bring a smartphone, an iOS phone, because America is spying using iOS on Chinese citizens. So Apple is a pawn, because we all know that's not true, but the Apple's a pawn because in its geopolitical Cold War going on between the U.S. And China, and if Trump gets elected, where Trump is saying he's going to put a 65% tariff on all Chinese goods, like the Cold War is going to get colder. And so um, this is uh, this is Apple getting the you know getting hurt by this geopolitical being geopolitical football. And then what would that then incur for the stock price reaction as well? You know, China last year was 20% of their revenue. So to the extent that 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 20% of revenue is in a downdraft. It will be an overhang on the shares for three or four years. Of, you know, it will hurt their revenue growth. So their revenue growth should be going should be five to seven percent. And without China, their revenue growth will be one to three percent, which is not great. 